Okay guys, um, we're going to take a look at some of these LED lamps. These are designed to be replacements for conventional um, 240 volt halogen lamps. Um, these are high voltage, so 240 volts. They're plug-in replacements for reflector halogen lamps. And uh, we've got two of them here today. One which I just bought from a local supermarket. This one here is supposedly a warm white 3 watt LED 35 watt halogen equivalent cost three pounds from Associated Dairies and this one here is a four pound one from eBay this purports to be a warm white 3000 Kelvin color temperature uh, four watt um, lamp in fact uh, it says on the box four one watt emitters and this clearly does not have four emitters it's only got three so I suspect I've been sent the wrong ones but uh, it doesn't really make a lot of difference we're going to take them apart anyway so let me just show you how they plug in and then we'll uh, we'll strip them down and see what they're like and just a comparison of the two lamps you can see the market hotspot on the eBay bulb um, and a very yellow beam edge with blue beam centre and a much more consistent colour on the ASDA bulb. Okay so this is the ASDA bulb so it's got this cast heat sink here with these quite decorative fluted uh, cuts in it. Um, on the front you can see the heat sink is, extends beyond the, the lamps and it's, it's, it's perforated so you've got these air vents for air to circulate quite nicely. You've got these compact um, plastic covered the electronic unit with three integrated reflectors within. Hopefully just make sure it's in focus. There. And you can see the three um, LED emitters inside. Um, weight wise that is pretty light but it's obviously heavy on the heatsink end. So what about the other one? This is the eBay bulb and this is really very much lighter um, to the touch. Looking at the heat sink, I mean this is extremely thin aluminium. The cut, it's either pressed, I think it may be pressed rather than cast. Um, it's very poor quality. Some of these uh, vent holes have been punched out to provide air circulation but there's bits of metal remaining in them. I mean take a look at that, I don't know if you can see that but there's bits of metal which have not been punched in that in those vent holes it's extremely poor quality and very very light in fact if you shake it it rattles that's how cheaply assembled this is and in terms of the overall appearances it's much the sort of same except we've got this larger metal plate with visible screws and these larger um, total internal reflection prism type uh, lens uh, devices so uh, let's take them apart and see what's inside. Okay, so we've got a fairly simple sort of pressed metal plate uh, and we've got these quite nice little uh, uh, total internal reflection prism type optics. So the light emitter is, is at the base of this, this cone or at the apex of the cone and it uses, utilizes a, a prism type effect, total internal reflection to direct the lamp light out the front in a tight collimated beam. Um, you can get these for most high power LEDs. Um, they're, they're, quite, they're quite convenient and they work quite well and as long as they're made of decent grade plastic without too, any inclusions or air bubbles they're pretty good and by using total internal reflection um, they're actually more efficient than using a, a standard reflector. What about within the actual LED itself? Let's just uh, focus up on that. So we've got three um, high power type um, LED emitters. Um, I believe the first company to come out with this sort of shape was Philips or uh, LumiLEDs as it, as it was then. And uh, they released these as the Luxian uh, series of LEDs. Um, this, this form factor has been copied quite, quite a lot by most of the uh, Chinese manufacturers. The other uh, major manufacturers who actually produce their own dyes such as Cree uh, and, and more recently Osram um, have developed their own form factors. 
So they're soldered to this little PCB, which um, we'll take out in a minute. But as you can see, there's the, the overall manufacturing quality is extremely poor. There's lots of flux residue. The soldering's of poor quality. Um, some of these joints look as if they're already starting to crack or might be dry. Um, it really is pretty bad. Um, I don't know whether these have been hand soldered or not. It, it looks like they probably have because there's been uneven heating. Interestingly, compared to the more expensive type of LEDs, these are clearly of visible quali visibly poorer quality. The moulding of the cases of these, these emitters is, is, is noticeably inaccurate and uneven and the, finish, the surface finish is poor. It's likely that these are made of the very lowest quality plastic and maybe uh, they, they lack the, the ceramic heat spreaders that the, that the better models have. So let's take it apart further and see what the ballast is like. Okay, well, we've taken it apart a little bit further, and it's not quite as horrendous as I first thought, but it's still of clearly badly made, even though it may not be quite so badly designed. So this is actually a metal core, aluminium-backed circuit board. So what you have is you've got your copper foils, your, your, your circuit foils on the top, then you have a wafer-thin layer of an insulator, and then the actual structure of the circuit board is actually aluminium. Uh, and they've covered it with lots and lots of heat sink grease and um, it bolts down onto this, uh, onto the base of the heat sink. So that's reasonably sensible, but um, you know, of the size of the heat sink is rather lacking. And then we've got our ballast, uh, which is sort of neatly heat shrunk, and then we've got the bulb base here. So uh, we'll take this apart a little bit further and see what we get. Okay, so this is what the ballast looks like. It's a terribly simple circuit. Um, we've just got our bridge rectifier built from discrete diodes here. We've got a couple of uh, diodes here, which are part of the uh, Switchmo power supply. I've got this 400 volt, 4.7 microfarad capacitor f with, um, f from the completely unnamed, there's no manufacturer's name on this whatsoever. And we've got this um, IC here, which is a BP3102, and this is an, uh, a high voltage LED driver. It's just a flyback oscillator, um, which is powered from the line via these uh, diodes, these additional diodes here. And uh, it simply is a flyback driver, and it drives this flyback inductor here, which is then rectified on the outside, and you can see the final. Uh, rectifier diode there. Interestingly enough, it's only halfway of rectified on the outside, um, which I suppose is reasonable for a flyback because flybacks are, I suppose, naturally DC, aren't they? Um, no smoothing capacitors. Again, like you, could, you could probably get away without that. Um, although it would be ideal for state for optimal stability in terms of regulation and a few other bits and bobs. Um, uh, resistors and stuff. So I suppose it's reasonable enough. This is a voltage regulating device, although there's no feedback from the secondary side. Um, it's got what's called primary side feedback where it senses the current and so on. So you do get to some extent a bit of voltage regulation. So very, very cheaply made. And in fact, again, the soldering is of appalling quality on this uh, device. Uh, very bad quality. You know, you'd be expecting a lot of these to go uh, and crack um, before too long. So that's the uh, eBay bulb. Um, generally, a complete is completely useless. Basically, the beam shape is wrong. The uh, color is not consistent across the beam. It's a pretty sickly color anyway, and the overall quality of manufacturing is is absolutely appalling. Okay, so let's take a look at the ASDA bulb. So this one here um, doesn't come apart so easily. I had to prise this out and this was glued in. But it's, a, it's an integrated plastic cover with total internal reflection prism type optics. Um, and it's molded as an entire unit rather than using generic components. So a little bit more thought has gone into making this. Um, again, we've seen the same sort of thing, but rather than use the old fashioned type of emitter, they're, they're now using these uh, surface mount type um, completely flat emitters with um, a dome on top and these um, again this form factor was pioneered by by Philips formerly Lumileds um, and they call this Luxian Rebel 
Um, I don't think these are Luxin rebels, they don't look the same, but they're the same form factor. So these are probably some Chinese copy of that form factor, but generally the advantage of this design is that um, you get slightly better thermal contact between this and the circuit board. Internally you can actually see that the soldering is of much better quality. The PCB is clean, there's much less flux residue, the solder is bright without any visible um, areas where the solder has been fractured because perhaps it was soldered at too low a temperature. The manufacturing quality of this heatsink is, is visibly very much better. It's, it's of good quality, it's got a good finish, um, it's all sound and it's really quite heavy to the touch. Not to mention the fact that the shape is, is, is better. So uh, let's take this one apart and have a look and see what's going on inside. Okay, this one didn't come out without a fight, but as you can see it's a metal cord, uh, aluminium PCB. Um, very, very light, very thin, no real problem with that. Lots of heat sink compound and it mounts onto this quite substantial heat sink here. Now the rest I think it's going to have to be extreme teardown time because um, I don't think I'll be able to uh, take this one apart reversibly. Okay so this is the Asda ballast. This is, a, this is a much better piece of equipment. So we've actually got one, two fuses. We've got an electrolytic capacitor here from a name brand, although not one I've heard of, Aishi and it's 105 Celsius rated, so high temperature capacitor suitable for this application. Um, monolithic bridge rectifier, a couple of ceramic capacitors, which we didn't see on the other one. Um, a few little diodes here, probably part of the flyback circuit. Um, although the flyback in this case, or I presume it's a flyback, is powered by this thing, which is an LNK6060. Um, I've got no idea what it is. I can't find any data sheet or any spec sheet or anything for it. Um, output rectifier and an output smoothing capacitor, which again was missing from the other one. So uh, reasonable sized uh, flyback inductor. In fact, look at if we compare the two side by side, look how much bigger that flyback inductor is than the uh, eBay one. This has obviously been built to an extreme price. This one has not been built to such an extreme price, but it's still cheap but is likely to be uh, of satisfactory performance. So uh, there we go. I uh, hope that was interesting.